All right, boys, we're going to be talking today about what I think is going to be the best defenses in Madden 24. Now, this is complete speculation, not 100% sure um, what are going to be the top defensive concepts or formations. It's, again, just general speculation um, about what we've experienced over the last two years. Now, one of the common things that the community has said um, when talking about the Madden 24 beta is they have said that um, it's going to be the game plays like a combination of a Madden 23 and Madden 22. And I actually threw up one of my favorite games from the Madden 22 season here, uh, which was Henry versus Noah in the Ultimate Thanksgiving Tournament. I believe that these are the two best defensive players year in and year out. Um, they just they they adjust really really well. And they play really, really, really good defense. Um, so when you think about it, like what are the best defenses going to be able to do, I think is also a really important question. So there's a couple things that I think a great defense has to be able to do. The first thing, foundationally, um, especially if you're playing competitively in Madden, you have to be able to have some kind of pass rush or pressure plan. This could be a blitz, okay? And, and generally speaking, over the last, um, I think, 13 years, it has been a meta blitz. There's been some kind of blitz that is the best blitz in the game, and it's typically pretty clear cut. Madden 22 was a year where you actually saw a lot of different styles um, of blitzing, but in general, they were all built around a blitz. Um, Another another kind of caveat to that, though, um, is one of the better defenses uh, that we've seen in a while, which was Madden 18, and it was Problems Nickel 3-3 Normal uh, Defense. What was unique about that was it had a specific setting in the coach adjustments where you could put your pass rush on aggressive, and you could get really, 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 really good sheds by only sending three or four. Um, we've seen really, really good defenses built around a send three or send four pressure system because that send three or send four pressure system consistently collapses the pocket, gets home, and and and, and puts the quarterback on it on a timer. Okay, so you've got to have some kind of pressure plan. Um, the second thing that a great defense has to be able to do is a, a, the best defense, in my opinion, has to be able to stop the run. You have to be able to uh, consistently stop the run. Now, this can be situational depending on the meta. Okay, so for example, in Madden 20, which was uh, the most defensive Madden, I think, maybe ever, probably ever. I mean, a guy won the Madden Bowl by running joke, won the Madden Bowl by having a punter. It was the most run-oriented and, and Madden and probably the most defensive-oriented Madden that we've probably ever seen, okay? What I wanted to say about Madden 20 that's really interesting, though, is based off of what you were playing. So, like, if you were playing somebody that was a passer, you would probably, chances are, be in dime 146. You would be in nickel normal or nickel 245. Uh, typically, you were in a more of a pass-centered uh, pass defensive formation. Nickel normal was another one that was really good in Madden uh, 20. Okay? Um, all, but the other thing, the little thing with that, though, is that, so that was kind of the general thing in Madden 20. But then also, let's say you were playing somebody like Joke that ran the ball every single play. If you were playing somebody like Joke that ran the ball every single play, you might drop into like a 3-4 odd or a nickel 3-3-5 three, three, wide, which was really good against the run, still is really good against the run. Um, a formation that was a little bit more generally geared um, to stopping a heavy run set. Okay, So in that, Madden, we saw that you needed to have a plan for stopping the run. It might have meant two formations. That's all I wanted to say about that. Um, so in general, though, if you're going to run, let's say, and let's say to use the Madden 20 example, if you're going to run one four six, you need to know how to stop the shotgun run game out of a lot of the meta uh, meta formations, such as bunch trips tight end, U trips, all of those things. And then if you're playing a little bit more under center, I form tight, you might have a little bit of a different defensive uh, defensive system. That's kind of still true, to be honest. Um, if somebody comes out in I form uh, tight. Chances are I might jump into nickel normal over storm brave, which has been probably the best run defense this year in general. Okay. So that's kind of the idea. So you got to have the ability to get pressure. You got to have the ability to stop the run. The third thing that you've got to have is you've got to have some kind of base defense um, from a coverage perspective, whether it be a man coverage, a zone coverage, a match coverage, some kind of defense that you can easily adjust to fit whatever defense or whatever formation that you're playing against. 
So the way this might manifest would be you got to have a bunch D, a tight D, a U trips D, a trips D. Um, generally, I like to teach in, uh, teach in terms of two by two or three by one compression or spread. So three by one compression, I have a defensive system for that. Two by two compression, I have a defensive system for that. And then three by one spread, I typically have a defensive system for that. And then maybe two by two spread, I'll have a defensive system for that. So within that, you only got to learn about four key coverage concepts to then be able to slow down a lot of the meta formations, um, really any formation, um, because three by one or two by two compression and three by one or two by one spread is going to probably make up about 80% of the formations that you're going to uh, that you're going to consistently face, so you've got to have some kind of plan uh, for those formations and how they can attack you defensively. So you got to have a pressure, you've got to have a run defense, and you've got to have some kind of plan for that. So with that in mind, what are some formations um, that I could recommend trying out and just speculating? These might be some really really good defenses in Madden 23. Well, the first one is you always want to start where last year stopped, okay? And the re you want to do that for a lot of reasons. One of, the re one of the biggest reasons, though, is it very quickly will help you understand what is different about Madden 24 than Madden 23. So I would start with dollar and nickel 3-3 cub. Um, those two defenses have, his have, over the last three years, four years even, been the best um, two defenses over the span of that four-year window. And they've been the most consistent, and they've consistently worked year over year. So I would start there, and that will quickly give you kind of an understanding about what is uh, what is good, what is not good. Another thing that I would really recommend, though, is if you want to learn different styles of blitzing, and I, I need to do an ebook on this or some kind of some kind of something on this to help people understand. There's really a couple of different ways to blitz in Madden every single year. So the first one is you can get um, slot corner pressure. That's that's what dollar is. It's slot corner pressure every single time. In um, and it's basically the, the the pressure is coming from the slot corners. The nickel three three cub is a little bit different type of pressure. I will say it's probably the most unique pressure. Essentially what that is, is it's just essentially overload. Um, I would also say that you could pair like a 3-3 Cub has also got some principles within it that resemble a little bit more of the loop. If you remember back to the beginning of Madden 23, the loop blitz at a nickel 3-3 normal was by far the best blitz because of the disengages it would cause loop blitzing might be a, uh, something else you want to test. So you want to test slot corner pressure. You want to test loop pressure. Another type of pressure you always want to test every single year in Madden is edge heat. And what do I mean when I say edge heat? Um, I mean like 4-3, even 6-1, or nickel over overstorm braid. Either one of those two things. Test the edge heat and see if you can send six and get two free off of double edges. Maybe a defense like mid blitz, for example. Um, those are really uh, how you could learn how to blitz out of those formations. So in general, you've got loop blitzes, you've got slot corner blitzes, you've got edge blitzes. And then the fourth one that I want to recommend as well is crossfire blitzing. This was a really, really good blitz meta in Madden 18, and I think the first part of Madden 19, the nickel 335 odd crossfire or LB cross three show two was a really difficult defense to pick up consistently. And it was because you could send five out of that LB cross three. And because of that looping middle linebacker that would crossfire into the A gap, a lot of times it would make it difficult for the guard to pick him up or it would make it difficult for the running back to come over and block that guy because you're still sending five. So they'd have to max protect to be able to pick up the blitz, and even then it doesn't always pick it up. That's kind of what you're trying to accomplish with your pressure. You're trying to create pressure that is going to force your opponent to then uh, have to uh, basically devote resources to blocking your pressure. So that's another one that I would really recommend. Um, is the crossfire blitzing. So loop blitzing, crossfire blitzing, slot corner blitzing, um, overload blitzing, which is kind of like um, it's kind of like what you see at a nickel three three cub. It's where you're sending the a gap, and you have so many people on the line of scrimmage, it just kind of overloads them. And then and then uh, and then the fifth one. So crossfire blitzing, loop blitzing, edge blitzing, slot corner blitzing, and then overload blitzing. Those are five different ways. I'm going to give you five formations that all kind of utilize one of those five things. Um, the first one for slot corner blitzes: dollar dime one four six dime two three six will. For uh, loop blitzing, uh, you want to check out. 
nickel three three normal. Um, also, you can also kind of loop blitz conceptually, and that's kind of manifested in a lot of formations. Three three five I was actually it actually has a really good loop blitz that was really good. I believe it was in Madden twenty two that this was really good, and at the beginning part of Madden twenty three it was really good. You might test that out. Another formation you can check out for loop blitzing. This was a meta towards the end of Madden twenty three. It was the edge blitz two. Out of the dime, two, three, six, Will, Henry and Wesley both ran that at the Madden Bowl. That's another example. So um, those are some loop blitzes. Those are some slot corner blitzes. Um, crossfire blitzing, nickel, three, three, five, odd, and nickel, two, four, five, odd with the crossfire stuff. Um, and then overload blitzing, nickel, three, three, cub, of course, or nickel, triple, for example. And then the last one was, I think I said, um, I think I said edge heat. So for edge heat, I would try out nickel normal or nickel over. And I would also try out uh, four three even six one. So those are some formations, and those are just some kind of some speculation about what might be good on the defensive side of the ball in Madden 24. I want to thank you for watching that, guys. We release a blitzing ebook every single year that actually teaches you how to blitz from every formation in Madden. We break down every single formation in Madden and show you how to get three-man pressure, four-man pressure, five-man pressure. We create an entire pressure plan for you from every formation of the game. We did that for Madden 22. We did that for Madden 23. And we're also going to be doing that for Madden 24. So if you want to get access to that alongside of all of the rest of our eBooks, it's all in the Patreon. For just $10, you'll be able to get access to all of that stuff. You can sign up by heading down to the description and clicking the, the link down below. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.